of the General Assembly. In the beginning of what I have to say to you tonight, I regret that I must briefly refer, at least, to the address made yesterday by the distinguished representative of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. <clears throat> In war, we gave to our allies all the help and cooperation a great nation could. In peace, the United States will support the United Nations with all the resources we possess. Our motives in war and peace we leave to the judgment of history. My colleagues, that closes the sad chapter so far as we are concerned. I shall not participate in any exchange of recriminations. The initiative of the Soviet Union in this matter is appropriate because of its mighty armies. Just as the initiative of the United States was appropriate in proposing measures to prevent the manufacture and use of atomic weapons. In November 9th, passed by this assembly, so far as Mr. Molotov's resolution concerning the regulation and reduction of other armaments, the whole world knows where the United States stands and has always stood. For 20 years before the war, and in the 15 months since the fighting stopped, the United States has consistently been in the forefront of those striving to reduce the burden of armaments upon the peoples of the world. The United States is prepared to cooperate fully with all other members of the United Nations in disarmament. It advocates effective safeguards by way of inspection and other means to protect complying states against the hazards of violation and evasion. or the re reduction of armaments. Mr. Molotov also referred to Article 43 in connection with the Soviet proposal concerning the presence of armed forces of the United Nations on foreign territory. He this information to the Security Council, end quote. The government of the United States understands Mr. Molotov's statement to mean that the Soviet Union is fully prepared to report on its armed forces in ex-enemy states as well as in other foreign territories. Therefore, the United States urges prompt fulfillment of this policy. The United States has nothing to hide with respect to our armed forces, either at home or abroad. The United States will promptly fulfill that policy, in no case are the United States forces in friendly countries except with the consent of those countries. It is our opinion that the proposed inquiry should include all mobilized armed forces, whether at home or abroad. large nations that are permanent members of the Security Council possess the power to keep peace in the world, to enforce ob observance of the law. The Charter does not give them this power. 
It merely recognizes that power and places obligations upon the, those, these nations to use that power in accordance with the law. Of course, this formula does no such thing. The permanent members are bound legally and morally in the same degree as all other members of the United Nations, quote, from the Charter, to settle their international disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not endangered. The veto does not legalize any violation of the law. And that is the law. No. Science and technology are uniting the world as it has never been united before. Fears and suspicions must not continue to divide the peoples of the world. We must use the institutions and laws of the United Nations to banish these fears and suspicions. So far as we succeed in doing this, we shall succeed in creating a world society and a world rule of law in which the veto will just wither away. This may take a long time, probably it will. But there is no shortcut, no magic formula by which we can escape the price of peace, only by a frequent recurrence to fundamental principles will we give to the Charter a living spirit in the moral sense of nations and of the human race. La traduction en français du discours de M. Austin ayant été distribuée, il ne sera pas fait de traduction orale. Je dois annoncer à l'Assemblée que demain, à 10 h il y aura une réunion du Comité Général. Demain, à 10 h réunion du Comité Général. Si vous voulez bien, nous allons encore entendre un orateur, et puis nous continuerons à 11 h demain le débat sur les... Monsieur le président, Monsieur les délégués.